Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Brenna. I own Brenna M Co, where we spread mental health awareness and positivity through products. So I have decided in 2023, I'm going to do some podcast videos because I just want to be able to rant sometimes. And I feel like doing a podcast might be beneficial to me and also beneficial to you guys because I will talk about a number of different topics. And so I got this mic. I hope everything's working fine. I haven't really tested it out, but let me know in the comments down below if it's working out perfectly. So to start off this podcast video, I just want to say either turn it on and start doing some work or just have it on the background, honestly. That's what I do with a lot of podcasts or you can sit down and watch too. I decided to take to my Instagram and ask if you guys had any questions, kind of just starting to get this rolling. I just wanted to see if anyone had any questions I may have answered in the past or any new questions that may have came up. So I got them up here on my phone and we're gonna answer some. Okay, so the first question is, can you share how you handle sales tax specifically for e-commerce for different states with different rates and how you pay those taxes to the appropriate places? So for me, since I'm all online, mine is just mainly through Minnesota. I do do some craft fairs that are in North Dakota, so I do have to do some North Dakota taxing, but um, I specifically don't have to pay taxes in North Dakota yet because the craft fairs I don't make enough at in order to have to pay taxes. But for Minnesota, honestly, I don't really know how it works if I'm being honest. I just keep all my receipts and I organize them for my tax lady. So she does everything for me and I don't really have to do much. She just tells me how much I have to pay or what I need to do for tax purposes. But honestly, I would just Google, for example, you can Google like Minnesota e-commerce taxes and it will get you all set up. They always send something in the mail about taxes coming up as well. So then I do mine annually. Some people do theirs quarterly. I just chose mine to do annually because I don't wanna have to deal with the quarterly process of it all. I just feel like it's gonna be way more complicated for me to do it quarterly than it would do annually. It's a lot of work towards the end of the year, but honestly, I just think that it's better for me and it, I would just choose whatever is better for you. Next question is, what is your favorite memory slash moment since opening your business? Oh my gosh, this is so hard because I have been so grateful to work with so many different companies and especially Michael's Craft Store. That was my dream company to work with. I, if you didn't know, I worked with them on the Cricut Auto Press and that was at a time in my life when I was graduating college and I had just moved into a new home, bought a home, and so it was just an absolute dream that I got to work with them and that they reached out to me and wanted to work with me. Another favorite memory would have to be when I got to travel to Seattle. That was super fun to work with Bella from Just Be Kind Co. She's a great girl. I love her. She's super nice, super sweet, and has amazing products as well. That was really fun because I never got to like really travel for my business. Granted, I like obviously had to pay for everything, like plane ticket and stuff, but I just had so much fun going and doing it, and I hope to do more in 2023. What advice would you give to a small business owner who doesn't know how to or where to begin with social media marketing? So with social media marketing, honestly, nowadays, it's just kind of like you don't really need a niche. Like, have fun with it and show your true side of who you are because your face is the face of the brand, practically. And so just have fun. Like, I show a day in my life. I always post, like, my coffee or my greens or just a bunch of different stuff. And I feel like... If you are being your true authentic self and just kind of putting yourself out there, more people will gravitate towards that because they gravitate towards brands who put on this persona per se. Brand personality is a big thing and I highly recommend 
showing yourself and who you are as a person. How do you like to set up your booth? So if you don't know, I do craft fairs. And so I like to set up my booth as like a flow. So me as a customer, if I'm coming into a booth, I like to be able to flow in and flow out a lot or just be able to kind of like go around and see all the products. I hate when stuff is cluttered. I make sure mine's very organized, very open. You can see everything. Everything's very well organized. For example, I have like my t-shirts in one place, my crewnecks, my hoodies, joggers. It's all separated so then if they are looking for maybe a specific thing like they are looking for a hoodie they're able to go to the hoodie section and look through it's kind of like a store if you have like a mini storefront it's sort of that thing you want to keep everything cohesive and aesthetically pleasing as well i like to have everything match so that's why i get new stuff all the time i feel like just because i grow in and out of trends or colors that I like, but I do keep to my brand colors. How do you know what to bring to craft fairs quantity wise? So lately I have been doing just kind of like my new recent stuff and I bring all of it. I, just because I don't want to potentially lose a customer because I didn't have their size and that size sold out. So I honestly, I bring it all. It's all up to you on what you want to do. You could bring a couple of each size depending on, but I like to bring it all and I bring the big bins and I put them underneath my table so that they're hidden and they hide very nicely. And I normally do a double booth, which is a 10 by 20 booth. A lot of people will do a 10 by 10, which is a smaller booth. It's a single booth. So it might be a little bit harder to hide the bins, but I honestly bring it all. <laughs> I've seen you mention on YouTube having to separate USPS and UPS packages. How do you do that or know which goes where after someone places an order? So on my Shopify is who I go through. And on mine, you're able to pick if you want to do USPS or UPS depending on what the buyer purchased and how many like business days they need it and so honestly I just try to pick the cheapest one if it's a breakable I normally do UPS because they take care of it way better than USPS but the labels are different so USPS has like either the P or the F on the right top corner and then UPS is like has like some black lines it's like once you print one of each off you're able to differentiate both of them and then you're able to separate them pretty easily did you start on Etsy do you think Etsy is good for starting small businesses or should you go straight to your own site for me personally I started on Etsy I loved Etsy it was before they skyrocketed their fees and I loved them because they brought in the traffic for me so people who didn't even follow me on socials were still finding my shop on Etsy and that was super nice because they do the marketing for you. I think it's a great starting point if you're starting out because you might not have like a lot of following or a lot of traffic to your social medias so having Etsy helps that balance out a little bit. I think once you start to have like a pretty big following then I would switch it over. I honestly think I switched over when I had 5k but I kept my Etsy open for a while too, just because Etsy was still driving traffic to my Etsy shop and that I was able to then turn those customers to my website with my business cards or my social media cards, um, AKA thank you cards. So if I were you, I would start out on Etsy. I mean, you can open your own store as well, but I would have both until you have a pretty good following and you are driving your own traffic mainly. If you're driving your own traffic, then I would definitely switch over to Shopify because Etsy's taking out those fees and they're not putting in any work for you. You're putting in your own work. And honestly, I thought about opening an Etsy store again. I closed mine, so I don't even have it anymore, but I thought about opening it again because I think it'd be kind of fun to have just for like my stickers or my car air fresheners or glassware. But I haven't really decided because Etsy is so hard with their SEO. Like, it's so hard. And I feel like once I get it down, then it'll be fine. But I just don't know where to start anymore with Etsy since I haven't done it for a year and a half. But, yeah.
If I were you, I'd start on Etsy and then move to your own website or have both if you're able to do that. Are you able to share where you get your tissue paper from? It's beautiful. Yes, so I get my tissue paper from No Issue Co. Um, I believe they're based in New Zealand. It's a bit expensive. I'm going to say that right off the bat. It is a bit spendy. But I think it comes to... Like maybe 50 cents a sheet or like 40 cents a sheet. I can't remember. I have to look back at my numbers. But I think it ups my packaging a lot and I love it. It's an expense that I'm willing to pay for because I just feel like it adds to the experience that customers are having with my shop. And I feel like if you have good packaging and adorable packaging, people are more likely to come back. And... I just think it's so adorable and I highly recommend it. I'll have them linked in the description as well. And I get the biggest size. So I don't know what you want to do with that information. The smaller size would probably fit around a shirt, but the bigger size fits better around a crew neck or a hoodie. I'd be curious to know why you decided to go the small business route and how you took that first step to actually start, especially since there is usually a larger financial investment with the risk of starting. So when I started my business, I actually was called Bee's Scrunchies. I started out with scrunchies and I would make them in my dorm room and then we got sent home from COVID in March 2020 from my college and so I was living at home at this time and no one could find masks. It was hard. So I took to Etsy and I started selling masks and I made a lot of money doing masks. I was selling them for about $5 a piece. Um, and I did have a couple private practices order hundreds from me. So I was staying up till like 2 a.m. sewing those. But I initially took that money and I decided to buy a Cricut and buy a couple apparel pieces as well as HTV. And I used my sister's Cricut Easy Press for the time being until I was able to purchase my own with the profits that I made. If I were you, I would start with about $500. Start with what you want. Or you could find a manufacturer and invest a larger amount of money. But at the time I was in college, I didn't have a lot of money and so I was also living in a home and I had to pay for rent and utilities, all that stuff. So I just decided to start with $500 and work my way up. I invested literally every single penny back into my business up until about a year ago. I'm not gonna lie, literally a year ago. I finally started paying myself and I think that was the best decision I made. I also like did bartending on the side so that I was able to pay my bills that way as well. But I literally just invested everything back into my business for almost a year and a half. So those are all the questions that I had to answer from you guys. If you guys have any more questions, please, please, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And I'll try and answer them as best as I can. But I hope you guys liked this video and kind of got to just chill and sit around and listen to me talk a bit. I hope to do more of these kind of podcasty videos in the future and let me know what you guys want to see. I would love to do these kind of videos like at least once a week because sometimes we all just need to sit down and take a breath and a breather from the busy world that we live in today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.